Hey, what is going on guys? Rudlinell here, coming back at you with another Python tutorial. And you know, in this video, in these couple of videos anyway, we're going to be embarking on a whole new journey, a whole other adventure on a mini-series like we've been doing in the last couple of videos on a new library and module inside Python. And in fact, in this one we're going to be checking out something called Hashlib. Now, Hashlib gets its name, obviously, from what we're going to be doing inside the library, hashing, and library, obviously, is tacked on to the very end of it. That's where you can get its name, hashlib, and that kind of syntax goes with everything else and that you'll typically see in Python, like URL lib and that sort of thing. But anyway, hashing, or what we're going to be working with in these next couple of videos, it kind of ties in with this idea of cryptography. Now, cryptography deals with encrypting and decrypting information, like text, sentences, words, data, ultimately, and it manipulates it in a sense that changes its form. It, it makes it into something that is no longer readable, or especially no longer what it initially was. It kind of hides it, or masks its real identity from what it was to begin with. Now, we do this, though, for the greater good. <laughs> and I mean that in the sense that we, we change this information, we tweak the data, we send it through an algorithm that messes the crap out of it, and we do this, though, to keep things secure. Like, obviously, we don't want to be storing information, but maybe we say we have to. We don't want to store information about the passwords that you use on a daily basis, or your credit card information, or anything that might be typically valuable to you. We don't want to store those in just plain sight and plain English. They have to be sort of tweaked and modified so that we can keep track of them, though. But any human just casually breezing by or looking at the screen won't know what that information is. So that's what cryptography is. It's it's the science, not so much science, I guess, but it's the idea of using an algorithm or some sort of, like, computated mathematical function process that jambles up the information that you pass to it, or you're working with initially, and turns it into something new that it wasn't initially before. And it hides what it was. So, that's, in a sense, hashing, as well. Because hashing, when you're working in Hashlib, Hashlib it, it has all these algorithms and these functions that will, in essence, turn your data into that masked form, but it cannot decrypt. And what I mean by that is it cannot revert it back to what it initially was. There are some, obviously, algorithms that can decrypt and, uh, and encrypt both side by side, go back and forth, but in hashling, in hashing anyway, we don't really need to do that. Uh, it's kind of a weird sense, but anyway, that's the way it works inside Hashlib. So, in Hashlib, though, you've got all these neat functions. We have, um, let's see, I'll get them all out here for you. In this video, I'm not actually going to be showing these to you guys. I'm not going to be working with the syntax or introducing the functions. In this video, I really just kind of wanted to tell you a bit crypt about cryptography and give you a specific warning that, hey, I am by no means a cryptography expert. In fact, I am very far from it. Some of the things that I'm going to be teaching and showing off in these couple of videos, I may not know all that much about. In all honesty, some of these things are just kind of things that I learned very quickly so I could show them to you. Because in Python, we want this functionality. We want to be able to keep track of information that we might be using more often than not. And if that's secure, we need to have a good, decent way of storing that information. So with the MD5 algorithm, with the SHA1 algorithm, we kind of are scratching the surface. Cryptography is such a humongous subject and topic and matter and concept to begin with that I only want to give you the very beginning. And just like any other algorithm or library or whatever process that I'm trying to teach you in Python, I leave it up to you guys to dig deeper, do further research, learn more about it. Because especially if you're going to be building something that's like this full-scale professional program that you're going to be selling to a client or something, maybe MD5 probably is not the best algorithm or the process to use. It's all up to you guys to go find what it is next, but Python can do this. This will get the job done for us, but by no means is it extensible. Anyway, in the sense that some of these algorithms are faster than the others. Some of them can decrypt and encrypt at an alarming at an alarming rate, and for security reasons, that may or may not be a good thing. It all kind of depends on the scenario. Some of them may need to be able to store the information in a tight, very clean and small orderly fashion, and some of them may not be able to do that. So, I won't actually be able to tell you all the tidbits and the all the information and descriptions of each one of these functions and algorithms, but I can show you how you can use them inside Python and how you can store information and get the job done with them. So, uh, 
really, in this video, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to introduce this idea to you guys, and in the next couple of videos, we're going to be playing with the syntax, working with the functions, and making something with this library. So, uh, I'm, I'm just about done here. I want to give my last little spiel where I kind of self-advertise, but uh, if you like the video, if you like the series, if you like some of the other series that I've been working in in Python, it would be really awesome if you could, you know, like the video. If you guys have some constructive criticism that you know I just love so much, maybe you want to request a tutorial series, dude, drop your name down in the comment section below, leave me a message, anything, and if you guys are feeling really generous, maybe subscribe, I don't know. It really kind of helps me with numbers and it gives me a better view of how many people are watching and all honesty, gives me motivation to make some of these tutorials for you guys. So, uh, alright, I think I'm just about done here. I'm going to sign out, but I'm really excited about the next couple of videos, and I hope you guys are too. Adios.